of this plan, but also to advance the, the timelines as set out in the plan. In 2011, the Downtown Core Task Force <laughs> finished their report and came up with their recommendations. Since that time, there's been a, a great deal of progress on, on the, on the uh, recommendations, some of which you've, you've seen today. Uh, in transit, which is one of the recommendations, there's additional routes, there's a new transit exchange, and new sidewalks, as you can see, in, in the area of the transit exchange. The Brownfield Development Guide was prepared to help uh, developers navigate contaminated sites and demystify the, the process of it. And there's been continued support for events such as Party in the Park and for the, uh, the Christmas Parade as well uh, to, to get activity in the downtown uh, as recommended by the, by the plan. Another item in the plan was the contact center and making that happen and, and council put in 500,000 in waived development fees and, and that's now operating. Another item was the greening program which, you, which you've, you've seen a presentation on the details of that. The Mill Street and the vacant building bylaw. One of the significant items in the plan was, was land assembly. Some of the key items noted with regards to land assembly by the downtown core task force was that revitalization is an ongoing process and that there have been many improvements that we've seen over time already in the downtown. But the key that they noted was that creating a neighborhood with residential development was the most important thing. That a, a, a sense of the downtown as just a, a destination place was not going to have a, a meaningful impact on, on change. And it had to be residential and there had to be, um, there had to be a significant amount of it in, in the real downtown core area. So they also noted that redevelopment in the core would act as a catalyst and have positive effects. It would, it would get people using the, the successful businesses that are there and um, create, create energy and people walking around and activity. So the uh, Downtown Core Task Force recommended land assembly to remove development barriers. The plan was to acquire and market properties at fair market value for large-scale redevelopment. HB Lanark was then retained and in 2011 they advised DPEC of best urban planning pra practices and principles and they recommended to DPAC and DPEC ultimately recommended to Council a focus on uh, land assembly in the Princess Yale Young Road area predominantly because it was, it was ready for redevelopment, but also because the city owned a great deal of property and there was a lot of bare land in that area. So HB Lanark at the time did a concept uh, plan up. It was a city center approach with significant residential development and, and this was the, the concept that they, that they came up with, showing what, what it could look like, what the vision could be in, in this area. So this redevelopment uh, presentation after it went to council was presented in uh, many many community organizations and uh, it was the topic of conversation at, at many OCP open houses and we've had overwhelmingly positive uh, feedback on it. The plan for the buildings has been to uh, retain the viable ones until the, all the properties acquired and a developer is identified. 928 to Young Road is in a state of disrepair Hippo Drugs was located on the site for many years and closed approximately 40 years ago. The building has been vacant for, I believe, at least a decade. Um, the minimum cost that we understand for, for occupancy, for just to get anything happening in there, would be about $800,000. And it's not really considered economically prudent to invest in a derelict building given the long-term plans for the site. So demolition is consistent with the downtown plan and it's supported by the downtown plan Impl implementation committee. So just to show, uh, remind council of the building we're talking about, some pictures that you can see the, the state that they're in and, and uh, you know, not, not much uh, redeeming qualities left. You can see from the side again, and you see some, <coughs> some of the cracking and the deterioration. A little bit more close up of some of the exterior. And the inside, it's, um, there's no heating, there's no electrical and it's just generally in a, a state of disrepair. It's extensive mold and, um, and just damage throughout. And you can see in this picture the rotting uh, sill plates, exterior walls and rotting studs. And the ceiling joists are rotten. 
The two neighboring buildings beside uh, a couple small buildings are attached. Um, they have shared walls and those buildings are, are empty now. They're not, um, they're not really viable buildings to, to retain and, and as part of the, the deconstruction that is being included in the 141,000 to, to take down all those, those three buildings. So it would be of these three buildings you see in the back um, up to the, the, the yellow building, which is a, a newer construction. Uh, all those buildings would be removed. And the interim plan is to put some, some, uh, some dirt in and some greening, some pathways, some trees, and make it a nice usable park in the interim until such time as uh, the next phase of the re redevelopment process would happen. So should uh, council accept this uh, <coughs> proposal, the um, demolition would begin February 24th. It would go until approximately April 14th. And at that time, the greening would begin. And then it would take approximately a month to, uh, to get the, the, um, the grass growing and, and that, that area ready for uh, people to, to get in and move around. And that's the presentation. Thank you.